Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. It is finally time guys. We are going to revisit the Jesmonite sandwich video. If you remember a few videos back, I tried layering up my mold with epoxy resin followed by Jesmonite, followed by polyurethane and something went a little bit skew wiffy and awry and it was all down to the fact that the jesmonite hadn't really been left to fully cure and the moisture made the polyurethane kind of burst through and created all these lumps and bumps in the epoxy resin and it was just a hot mess but we're gonna go again because I absolutely love the concept I love the idea about it I love the potential that this method has and this technique is gorgeous okay first up is a clear layer of epoxy resin just like it was before this time around I am using the Estoyo resin guys I can't even remember lot I can't even remember two weeks ago what I used but in today's video we are using Estoyo resin for the first layer and I'm just pouring a thin layer I don't want to pour too much just not even halfway up the mold and I'm using my heat gun to evenly spread this out and also diminish any air bubbles that were in there now I do tend to leave my resin in a hot bath for a little while if it's been particularly cold but sometimes it's easy to do it this way as well just use your heat gun and blast those air bubbles out 24 hours later the Estoyo resin is fully cured and it is time to do the jesmonite now if you missed that video we did this multi-layer technique with the tattoo and the neon jesmonite and yeah it just popped so basically the whole entire surface of the epoxy resin almost blew up like a balloon and it separated out from the tattoo even it it was just very very bizarre but yeah the only logical ex explanation was that the um, polyurethane resin had interacted badly with the wet jesmonite just didn't give it a chance to cure so it just tried to burst its way through like something from a Sigourney Weaver alien movie anyway we are back we're gonna go back with a temporary tattoo because you cannot go wrong with a temporary tattoo I absolutely love them if you are new to my channel I use a lot of temporary tattoos in resin and you can use them on ecos as well and just use your eco sealer to seal them in they work perfectly in the same way these are temporary tattoos designed for your skin and your body so apply them in exactly the same way I am applying this upside down do make sure do make sure that you remove that protective plastic layer otherwise trust me I've been there done that the tattoo will unfortunately get too wet and stick to its own protective layer and you've destroyed it so remove that before you stick it down to your resin now I'm using a very saturated sponge fully saturating the back of the tattoo as you would do if you were putting this on your arm and then slowly sliding off that backing paper now I would fully recommend slowly sliding the backing paper off purely because if you've missed a bit then you're gonna rip the tattoo because I've done it I've been there <laughs> This is such a gorgeous tattoo. It's one of my favorites. You would have seen me use this tattoo many times, actually. I kind of wish I could buy the same tattoo in a pack of 10. You know, you have to buy like a whole pack of tattoos just to get the one tattoo that you're in love with. But yeah, the stopwatch and the flowers are beautiful. Make sure that your tattoo is dry before you move on to the next layer. And for me, the next layer is jesmonite. Now, we don't want much jesmonite at all. So I don't know if you can even read the numbers on my already damaged weigh-in scales. But I poured in six grams of jesmonite liquid to which I'm doing 2.5 times that in powder. So really not much at all. And I'll be honest, it was too much. So if you are doing this technique, I don't think you would need more than two grams or three grams of your AC100 liquid. Of course, if you're using any other eco, just work accordingly. Just don't make up too much. I think eight grams total would be enough for each color because again, I ended up pouring this into a separate mold, which was a heart mold, which you would have seen ages ago because this video took me a week to make. <laughs> okay, first up, we're going with the neon um, color. Now, these neon powders are from Let's Resin. They are neon powders, not mica. They work completely differently to mica. So just make sure that you thoroughly mix them into your eco. Now, there are no rules here. You saw that on the screen. Allow yourself the freedom when you do the splash and the splodge technique to just go with the flow. Have fun because that is what it's all about, guys. The fun I have when I do 
eco splashes and splodges and splatters are my favorite thing to do on the planet. Okay, here we go. I did put a yellow circle. So whilst I say there was no rules, I did want to make the clock face on the stopwatch one color, just so that that becomes the main character of the tray and the rest just doesn't matter. Just splash it on, splodge it on, do what you want, any form or fashion. The only thing I didn't do was get too close to the edges. I didn't want I just yeah I was worried about backing it in resin again and the two separating um jesmonite does not stick to cured epoxy resin it will eventually pop off or scrape off or scratch off um but if we're sandwiching it like this it will because the top layer of resin will bond to the bottom layer of resin hence sandwiching the jesmonite in between both layers now final color going in is the green Again, these are neon powders by Let's Resin. Everything I'm using in this video will be linked below. So I am an affiliate for multiple people now, which is absolutely fantastic. So there is a whole bundle of codes down in my description box for you. It's not just Let's Resin and Estoyo and all of the things, but I am also an affiliate for other brands such as Shadow Foam and also Creative Fabrica to get all your designs for your Cricut. So there's so much to see in my description box. Go check it all out. And this is what we're looking like. It does look like a hot mess, but you need to trust the process because honestly, when I demolded the last tray that went wrong, I still love the results. Now, the trick here was to leave the jesmonite to fully cure. Most people say it's fully dried out in 24 hours, but I didn't want to risk it. I put this project to one side and four days later, I revisited. Now to make this a completely fair experiment, I am still backing it in the polyurethane resin. I was arming and ahhing about it. I was thinking maybe I should just use the white epoxy but then it wouldn't be a fair comparison to the first project that I did, you know? So I am using white polyurethane from Let's Resin. However, if you don't have white polyurethane, which I know the majority of us don't, then you could, of course, just back it in your white epoxy resin. I would not recommend backing this in white eco because that will eventually separate from the epoxy resin. So yeah, there's lots, lots to think about and take on board, but here we are. It's a 30 second mix time on this poly and you know it's getting hot in your hand so, so fast, you know when it's time to pour. When it does pour, it is very water-like, very watery. So it goes in all the nooks and crannies. The other thing to mention um, is something I forgot to say. Before I mixed up the polyurethane, I did actually dump a load of powder on. You would, you, you can see it. You can see the powder. I just dumped it straight from the bottles, straight down and in just to see. Do you remember those lights? Do you remember that um, project I did and they looked like neon flashing lights? That, that That is what I was going for here. But yeah, only because I could, I did. And when we can, we do. That was it. That was it. I had lots left though. I had enough left to fill two more hearts. So I was really quick and I splodged a load of powder in the hearts, poured the rest of the polyurethane in the hearts. And of course, I've sped this part up for you. This polyurethane cures within 10 minutes and we can demold and it is a dream to work with. But always wear your PPE. Safety first. I had my gloves and I had my respirator on, especially for the polyurethane. It is definitely more smelly than your epoxy. This is about 20 minutes later and it was time to demold and the hearts are gorgeous. There was a little bit of off rub. I could rub my finger over the surface of the heart and yes, some of that powder was coming off on my hand, but not much. And once it was off, it was off. There was no more to rub beautiful results like that paint splatter result where I just dumped the powder in poured the polyurethane back and I want to do more of that because that is fun and how simple how simple is it and it caused probably would work with just epoxy resin as well okay as for the tray it was time to demold the tray and I was expecting the same wow results that we got with the first tray and I guess at this point, I was just so happy. It is beautiful. That yellow clock face really works well. And it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. And that was to make the stopwatch the main feature, the main character of the tray. As for the other colors, they're just so random and splodgy and sporadic. But yet we've still got that powder that has been dumped in there that looks like paint splatter. Again, that came out beautifully. Now it was a case of 
waiting. Because when we demolded the first tray, there was no sign of issues. There was no sign whatsoever from this tray that things were about to go awry and it was all going to go downhill. So basically, I'm thinking that could still happen and we just have to wait and see because polyurethane and jesmonite just might not like each other, even though I know the jesmonite has cured. So I waited again another three days later and oh my goodness guys it's perfect it's absolutely perfect so I think I've been a little bit excessive dramatic and extra in the amount of time I waited for the jesmonite to cure I waited three days no four days for the jesmonite to cure and three days before I checked back on it to see if any lumps bumps or mounds had happened here and nothing so my guess is that after 24 hours you'll be good like 24 hours you'll be good I probably will try it again at some point in the future but this definitely needs a top coat to bring it to life now the only reason I'm top coating you really don't need to because the tattoo is sealed in on that top layer of resin um, but the only reason I'm top coating is because this mold I want to say is about four years old and it is a battered and bruised and dull so I just feel like having a top coat on this is going to bring it to life and make it super beautiful but I was so happy guys I was so happy that you know it took a week yes but this was all for experimental purposes you don't have to wait a week so I can imagine the comments now I don't have that kind of time Claire thank you honestly guys you don't have to wait that long I just waited that long just to see the best results possible and we got the best results possible very rarely do you see anything on my channel that is perfect I always say handmade with love not perfection we all know that I say it but this one in my eyes was pretty perfect. Everything about it worked and I am so, so happy with the end result. You would have seen the resin there. For the top coat, I'm using the Let's Resin 24 hour epoxy. Again, a bit like Estoyo, super clear, beautiful to use, love, love, love. And once I'm happy with the amount of resin I've put in there, I gave it a nice long blast with the heat gun to make it crystal clarity clear before covering it over with my microwavable food covering which doesn't go anywhere near my microwave or food I just use it for resin and uh, this is the result 24 hours later it is stunning guys really beautiful finish no air bubbles just a stunning shiny surface finish again I'm in love. I'm just so happy that it worked this time and we got no bowing out of that epoxy resin due to the wet jesmonite. The trick here is obviously to make sure your jesmonite is fully dried out. So anything from 24 hours onwards, I think you'll be okay. Equally, if you're using an epoxy resin background, you'll I think you'll be okay because I have made many videos mixing jesmonite and epoxy resin epoxy resin together at the same time soaking wet poured together at the same time with absolutely no issues of either of those two mediums curing i think it was the polyurethane that was the real kind of bad guy here <laughs> anyway i hope you have finally well i'm no i'm glad you finally got around to seeing the results um doing it properly and waiting the duration but i hope you feel inspired to give something like this a go to do a jesmonite sandwich and yeah thank you so much thank you so much if you've been here in the live chat i appreciate you all massively and to anyone who's new if you haven't yet please hit that thumbs up it's the only way i can grow on youtube it helps the algorithm know that you like this content and don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Oh, and subscribe. Guys, why am I so rubbish about this? I'm so rubbish at asking you guys to actually give me a thumbs up and subscribe. But definitely do it because it's free and we love a bargain. I'll see you in the next video.